Hello friends, uh, in this video lecture I am going to talk about uh, the conjugation procedure uh, in a little bit more detail. So I recommend you to go back and first look uh, at uh, the basic overview of conjugation process then come back and see this lecture. Otherwise you, can, uh, you can't understand uh, a single word I am going to tell you in this lecture. Okay, So let us first uh, talk about the simple uh, terms then we will go to the discussion about details. Now in any kind of conjugation we, we must need two different cell one is called uh, the donor cell another one is called the recipient cell now the donor cell will give something and recipient cell will receive something now here the something means the genetic element uh, sometimes and most of the times is uh, the plasmid okay in the very first picture what we are looking at a simple procedure a simple pathway of production and export of some protein factors now these protein factors are really really important during the conjugation process now how these uh, protein factors are generated normally this is uh, this, are, this is the chromosome that means the bacterial chromosome we are talking about the bacterial chromosome now another very important consideration is to look at this so if this is a bacterial cell this bacterial cell con consists uh, or contains two different things one is uh, this which is a bacterial chromosome another part is a uh, circular thing which is called the plasmid now in this bacterial cell have to transfer this plasmid onto uh, the recipient cell but not the chromosome because the bacterial chromosome is the most important part it is carrying all the necessary important or ingredients which is uh, needed for the bacterial cell to live on but the plasmid is not having the uh, most important parts it is having some uh, some parts which are specialized which is uh, which is not totally necessary but if these parts are there the bacterial cell ca uh, can have extra advantage so plasmid is uh, something to do with the advantage advantageous factors but not the necessity now the chromosomal dna of a bacteria deals with the necessity uh, of living of the bacteria okay so this a uh, clear make this thing clear in your mind okay okay now in this case uh, we are talking about the chromosomal dna so this is the chromosomal dna we are talking about now the chromosomal dna encodes for different proteins like uh, like this C P D C A D and all these things. Now before production of these proteins, what they do? They are genes C A D C P D and all these genes. It will produce the transcript of the genes, which is called the pro C A D, pro C P D, like that. Okay. Now why it is called the pro? Because it is unprocessed. It is uh, just uh, the primary or premature uh, condition of that protein. Now as uh, it is matured and translated, it will produce the mature C P D and C A D. Now in this case, the CPD and CAD, these uh, proteins are really, really important, and the positive regulator we're going to, we are going to see. These are the positive uh, uh, um, regulators of the conjugation event to be established. Okay. Now they produces this CPD CAD1 molecules and they export it outside. Why they need to export it outside? Remember, whenever you are trying to, uh, you are producing something, you are throwing it outside. That means you have to do something with uh, other other cells, right? So bacterial cell need to uh, convey the message of production of all these things with other bacterial cells which are surrounding this bacterial cell. Now it is instigating other bacterial cell to say, look, I am produ producing all these things. That means I am trying to go through the conjugation step. So come and help me to do that. Okay, so that is the basic process. Now let us move on to the second picture. Now if we look at the second picture, what, what uh, another uh, picture of it is the plasmid DNA. Now what we are looking at the plasmid. So this is the chromosomal DNA, the red part, the chromosomal DNA. And uh, let me take the color. Uh, yeah. This is the plasmid DNA, the, the green part is the plasmid DNA. Now in this plasmid DNA there are several different types of genes which are called the TRA genes. Now this TRAB, TRAC, they code for the transmembrane proteins which are the membrane receptor most of the time. Okay, And they can also produce the TRAA proteins. Now the TRAA protein is the transcription regulator protein because it can sit onto the operator side or regulator side of a transcription of transcription of different genes like TRAE, ASA, 
uh, and all these things okay tra xy tra and all these different genes okay now here what we can see in in, in the previous situations in in general situations where there is no conjugation event whatsoever uh, they produce all this trsbc genes which are sitting on which are the proteins tra b and c sitting on to the cell membrane that produces this tra genes which is sitting on to the uh, regulator site of uh, the transcription uh, uh, of uh, this plasmid and all the other things are just shutting down that means the other downstream process of asa tre lad uh, iad tra xy and all these things are shutting down so the signal is off in this case okay now let us move on to uh, the next level of discussion now in the next level what we are looking at is a little bit more complicated and where we will see uh, the beginning of uh, the conjugation now when the cell need to convey the message of production of the conjugation event that they need to combine with other bacterial cell via fillers and they need to transfer the DNA material from one uh, cell into another they need to convey the message and how can they do that they produces this uh, this CADN uh, molecule CAD and PAD we have seen those things which are chromosomally coded molecules so let me change the color because the chromosomally coded are red here CAD molecule which is the chromosomally coded is red now you can see not only this CAD molecule is produced by this uh, donor cell but also it is produced by the recipient cell and most of the time uh, recipient cell produces the CAD one in much more amount so they produce a CAD it will come and bind with the receptor the membrane receptor which are TRSC and TRSC TRAB and this TRAC and TRAB are the plasmid coded proteins remember so these are the plasmid coded protein I color in, in green now the CAD1 bind with this TRAC now right after the binding of TRAC it will help to accomplish a complex onto the cell membrane with other proteins like OPP and all, all this so it will make a transport channel uh, so OPP is having a transport channel in between them so it was closed in previous times but whenever there is an interaction with TRAC with CAD1 the OPP complex uh, or, or the tunnel is opened up and it is free uh, for transferring that CAD1 molecules in, in, inside the cell so the CAD molecule come inside the cell and uh, as we are looking at the CAD will sit on to the TRA1 now this TRA molecule is also uh, uh, the plasmid coded so this molecule is the plasmid coded and the CAD1 is uh, the chromosomal coded as we are looking at so CAD1 will go and sit on to the TRA uh, one molecule TRA molecule and as a result they trans they start uh, to take this TRA one molecule away from this regulator site so TRA was sitting onto the site and blocking the transcription of the downstream genes which are TRA E ASA which is the most important part ASA so again this is a very very important gene okay now as soon as the CAD1 bind with TRAA it will drag this TRAA out from this place thus by leaving all these genes free so now all the other genes can be easily transcribed and ASA is transcribed into ASA protein now the ASA protein is transported in outside the cell and it is accommodated itself onto the cell membrane region now why this ASA protein is important uh, because this ASA will help uh, to attach two bacterial cells together now we will see this ASA protein couple of ASA protein will come and attach to the Mm, junction of two different cells two cells of donor and recipient now if we think and talk about the donor and recipient cell so in this case this is the donor cell and this is the recipient cell as we are looking at okay uh, yeah and here what we are seeing are the different parts this is the chromosomal part and this is the plasmid part now the plasmid part will uh, be transcribed uh, will, will be taken out onto the recipient cell uh, because this, this plasmid part is having the ori T uh, and from the origin of transfer DNA will be cleaved and through the rolling circle mode of replication it will be transported onto uh, this R region relaxes will come relax enzyme relaxes enzyme will help to drag it apart so if I draw the relaxes enzyme at this position it will be this so this is the relaxes enzyme it will uh, attach to the 5 prime phosphate group it take uh, uh, this DNA strand and it will enter it help it to enter into the recipient cell 
okay and right after this event uh, several round of events are happen right after establishment of all this plasmid transfer look at the, this picture again now this plasmid is clipped and transferred into the recipient cell now what we end up with we are having uh, this recipient cell in our hand so we are having this recipient cell uh, yeah we are having this recipient cell with our hand now inside the recipient cell the plasmid is transferred to it completely and this other strand of the plasmid suppose this is a single strand which is transferred and the other strand of the plasmid will sooner be transfer uh, sooner be made via the other dna synthesis machineries okay and right after that we are having completed uh, the conjugation process and right after this conjugation process uh, we need to block the synthesis of all those asa proteins which are necessary for the integration and conjugation because anti uh, because this production of the proteins uh, causes us lot of atp a lot of energies we need to block the unnecessary production of protein in this uh, post conjugation time okay now in this case how can we block this now in this case as we are looking at uh, this uh, plasmid uh, transcribe uh, um, trna will uh, sorry plasmid transcribed mrna will produce uh, proteins which are called uh, IAD1 uh, just uh, opposite function of CAD1 because CAD1 help uh, to to accomplish the conjugation process and right after the establishment of the conjugation process this plasmid again code for the IAD1 uh, this IAD1 uh, protein which is pre uh, which is in pre preliminary time pro IAD is uh, modified to IAD1 and export it outside now this IAD will come and bind it TRSC molecule uh, as a result of this binding this TRSC with IAD complex is really really uh, tough to bind with all the other channel proteins like OPP and all these things so right after the binding of IAD with TRSC will block all the downstream process of this uh, transport of the, all these processes okay and not only that but also on the opposite hand chromosomal dna uh, is important for shutting uh, some of uh, its functionality down in this case right after the establishment of uh, this uh, <coughs> conjugation because right after the conjugation chromosomal dna uh, produces uh, pro cad1 uh, because this is the normal process but it uh, block uh, it blocks the Processivity of pro CAD1 into CAD1 and blocks the transport of block, uh, pro CAD1, which is established by TRAB. You can see here. So TRAB uh, uh, is malfunctioning in this place. So as we are producing pro CAD1 and convert it into CAD1, but still we cannot take it away from cell because TRAB is blocked. TRAB channel is totally blocked. Okay. So th this is the job for the plasmid which is newly incorporated inside the recipient cell to ensure that there, is, there will be no production of the conjugating proteins right after the conjugation event. So it, it establishes these things in two ways. First thing, it produces the IAD1 protein and the IAD1 protein right after the binding of TRSC will block all the downstream processes and thus blocking the production of ASA proteins that is first thing and the second thing that this they also uh, block the activity of TRAB transporter which ultimately uh, block the transport of CAD1 which is the positive controller of conjugation so with the help of these two in new ways uh, this plasmid which is uh, transported onto this recipient cell will ensure that no further process of conjugation is met right after one round of conjugation okay so that is uh, uh, the conjugation event in all the details so let me sum up all these things so CAD1 is a positive controller recipient util uh, re recipient releases it it will bind with TRSC now TRSC with CAD1 can uh, uh, can have entry inside the cell and can take the TRA away so the transcript uh, so the transcription of TRA, E and ASA can be done. Now ASA will help to establish all these things, uh, all the downstream processes. In other case, right after the establishment of conjugation, pro IAD1 will produce IAD1, which will bind with TRAC2, but it will block uh, the transporter 
uh, on any transporter inside the cell it will block TRA uh, it will block OPP and it will blo block TRA B so as a result of the blockage of transporter no proteins can come outside or can come inside uh, during the conjugation stages okay so that ensures the blockage of transcription so that is a control between CAD protein and IAD1 protein for controlling this conjugation event okay so that's it and I hope it will help you to understand thank you